I'll be talking about adjuvant therapy at the uh, World Congress of Melanoma uh, this year, which should, I should say, have been in Rome, but it will be done virtually, of course. And uh, I'll be laying out the landscape of uh, adjuvant therapy uh, as it's practiced pretty much around the world. Uh, and the good news is that, of course, we have at least four agents or groups of agents that are approved as adjuvant therapy for stage three resected high-risk melanoma. We have two PD-1 antibodies, nivolumab and pembrolizumab, certainly approved in the U.S. and also in the EU. We have uh, dibrafenib and trametinib, which, of course, are the uh, dual-targeted drugs. And from several years ago, we also have ipilimumab, which was approved before any of the others, which does have activity at prolonging both relapse-free and overall survival in resected stage three disease. The, uh, certainly in the U.S., we very commonly use uh, single-agent immunotherapies, and the updated data from both Pembrolizumab's Checkmate, or pardon me, um, Keynote 054, and the Checkmate 238 study, which was the nivolumab study, uh, suggests that for nivolumab at four years, you're probably close to a plateau at about a 50% rate of relapse-free survival, which is great. On the other hand, that means that half the patients are still relapsing and there's plenty of room to go to improve that regimen. In that study, which was updated and published in Lancet Oncology a couple of months ago with Paolo Acerto as the first author and me as the last author, the survival between nivolumab adjuvant therapy compared to ipilimumab adjuvant therapy was no different, which is interesting. And when you think about it, there was an inherent crossover there. So if you got nivolumab adjuvant therapy and relapsed, if you were re-resected, you could get adjuvant ipilimumab. If you were not re-resected, if you had metastatic disease, you'd either get ipi or ipinevo or pembro. So you had a number of alternative therapies that essentially made a crossover. If you got ipilimumab adjuvant therapy in that one-to-one -one randomization and you failed and relapsed, you could either get PD-1 adjuvant therapy or ipinevo or PD-1 alone as metastatic therapy, so there's an inherent crossover. So that's, that's the complicating factor. But the good news is that the plateau of survival for Checkmate 238 will probably be at five years about 75%, which is a fantastic figure. If you go back in time, you expect about a 50%, 60% survival at five years max, maybe even less. And so that means we've had a major increment in survival. We've also, of course, had an increment in relapse-free survival since with IPI alone, relapse-free survival at five years dips well below 50%. It's clearly at 50% or even more at five years in the nivolumab arm. If you look at pembrolizumab, you have less follow-up, but it looks like to a first approximation in that placebo-controlled trial, the data will be very similar. Pembro and Nevo, again, very, very similar drugs. We uh, haven't heard much new data about dibrafenib and trametinib, but the interesting thing is if you look at the hazard ratio over time, up to five years, where you have good follow-up in the dibrafenib trametinib adjuvant trial versus placebo, hazard ratio for relapse looks about the same as for both of the uh, PD-1 drugs. So no matter what you get, Dabtrem, Pembro, Nevo, it looks like you're going to have real benefit in terms of relapse-free survival and you're probably compared to placebo gonna cut it about in half. So I tell patients the relative reduction in risk is probably half if you get adjuvant therapy versus no adjuvant therapy. And there's still interestingly the option of ipilimumab, which would rarely be used. It would be in a BRAF wild type patient who failed PD-1 adjuvant therapy. They might be able to go on and get re-resected. And I've put those folks on adjuvant ipilimumab. But if someone fails adjuvant PD-1 blockade, I hope that they can be re-resected and be BRAF mutated. I'm going to put them on dibrafenib and trametinib, and those patients in the long haul can do very well and will hopefully up the road have uh, an investigation into what happened in those who fail adjuvant IPI or adjuvant NEVO on the 238 trial and got re-resected because we're following those patients over time. The last piece of information that relates to adjuvant therapy, of course, is the recent news just presented at ASCR two days ago by Georgina Long that unfortunately the Checkmate 915 trial was negative for relapse-free survival. That was modified ipinevo versus nevo alone. Very large, well-controlled, well-done phase three study, over 1,900 patients. And again, whether you're pdl one positive or negative, BRAF mutated or not, no 
increment in relapse-free survival with the combination versus the single agent. Bit of a disappointment. And again, that was a modified dose and regimen, and we'll probably never know whether it was that modification that caused those regimens to be so close in relapse-free survival. But I think the field will move on, and new studies in adjuvant therapy are uh, Bempa uh, galdazlucan, which is the uh, pegylated IL-2 with nivolumab versus nevo alone, and we'll have probably a uh, LAG3 nevo versus nevo alone study coming up, given the nice encouraging data we heard about nevo LAG3 that I guess will be presented at ASCO. So that's where the adjuvant uh, uh, sphere is. It's obviously very encouraging. And thinking about our guidelines in the U.S., large numbers of patients are getting adjuvant therapy at, I might say, a considerable cost. But if you calculate the benefit, there definitely is benefit in terms of relapse-free survival. And in my view, versus placebo, there's clearly benefit in overall survival to getting Pembro, Nevo, Dibrafenib, Tremetinib, whatever regimen you prefer. So in the U.S., those are all approved adjuvant frontline regimens uh, in our U.S., uh, so-called NCCN guidelines, and I think we will see a lot of usage of adjuvant immunotherapy and targeted therapy that will change the face of melanoma in the next 10 years, because everyone at one point will get adjuvant nivolumab or pembrolizumab or dibrafenib trametinib. So it's going to change how you treat a patient who relapses with unresectable metastatic disease. The other interesting point about guidelines in the U.S. is that we have much more common use of combination immunotherapy, IPI and NEVO or PEMBRO IPI, and uh, our guidelines clearly rank it very highly. Uh, I think in the EU, perhaps Australia, probably less use of combination immunotherapy in frontline, uh, much more use of PD-1 blockade alone. And you wonder what the recent positive data for PFS of NEVOLAC3 is going to do to that. Uh, will everyone be using frontline nivolumab lag 3 going forward? That's a question that remains to be answered. And I hope to see the NEVOLAC3 data uh, at ASCO this year.